Okay, I'm ready. Okay. I'll go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Tim Bryant. I'm uh, Director of Technology for Jeff Davis County School District. Um, I've been working for years with school districts in our area with the SRESA Consortium um, going out for bid on internet and WAN services. Uh, and we provide this service to our to our member school districts uh, to make it a little bit easier for them to be able to go out and do some competition as far as as far as their WAN circuits and their internet goes. Um, we've been trying to branch out on this because we've seen and, and Marvin and, and others can attest to the fact that uh, any kind of competition, even the, the smallest amount of competition, just starts driving those prices down tremendously. And so uh, people going out for, for bid on their internet circuits on their own or using uh, S. Reese's contract, um, it's, a, it's allowed a, a, a lot more competition in these areas. It's driven down prices across the state. And we're seeing more and more fiber getting buried in, in, you know, everywhere throughout the state. It's, uh, it's exciting considering where we came from, those of us that were back you know, here during the state uh, network and everything, to see how much, you know, how much we've grown and everything. So I've only got about 10 slides. I will not take up much of your time so that everybody can, can head on out. Um, just need to go through some things if you are interested in, in, in purchasing off of what has now become a, a state of Mississippi RESA consortium contract. Uh, I think there's only about how many, Marvin, three or five school districts that aren't a member of one of these RESAs already? There were four, I believe. Okay, so all the rest of the school districts are already members anyway. It's just a matter of getting these LOAs signed. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. It's there just in case at the last minute you need to jump in and do a bid or whatever. You can buy off of this contract. Uh, our, our bids are usually multi-award. Um, is telepacking here or, or anybody from inline or detail. Uh, right now those are the three that were that were on our last contract. Uh, um, inline de uh, detail and uh, and telepack, which is, is of course ceasefire. Um, I know that in my area I, I ended up with the inline coming in and being the lowest bidder in Marvin's area right down the road and ended up with with telepack, you know boring fiber all the way under the, the Pearl River to get him, you know, all hooked up and everything. Uh, but this, this contract is, is, is free to use. Uh, I've got Marvin helping me out with it uh, to kind of keep me organized and everything. We're going to try to hand you everything that you would possibly need um, to be able to use it and, and utilize it as a good tool. But let me go through real quick. Um, some language from USAC as far as as far as the consortium goes and a consortium contract. Um, a consortium is a group of entities that come together to undertake, and this is taken straight from USAC's website if y'all want to look it up, uh, come together to under, undertake a project or achieve a goal that is beyond the resources of the entities acting as individuals. So when you're when you're talking about going out, you know, statewide for a bid or whatever, this is, you know, you your, your, these school districts, and, and I would encourage any of y'all that are in an area where you've got, you know, you might have a mom and pop somewhere nearby that, you know, five of you want to go. There's no reason you can't go into smaller consortiums in a certain area. Um, there again, if y'all want to use ours, it's fine. We're not trying to sell anything. We're trying to get as many people to go out and, and check the prices and see, you know, what you can get done in your area. Um, S. Risa, of course, it, for this contract is the it will be the consortium lead member. Um, if you were to do it as a school district, you would need one school district to step out as the consortium lead member, get LOAs from all of the other school districts, uh, file a form 470, do all of those things. Which is as far as we will be going going with it. Um, we we will be filing the get all the LOAs, going out for bid advertising the newspapers, filing the form 470, and then we will turn around and hand you that 470 number and all of that information for you to be able to go out and get many bids just like off of the EPL from these different vendors uh, that have you know that have chosen to, to bid on this contract. Uh, this is just yeah you know, I'm, I'm I'm explaining uh, why this RESA and there is actually if anybody is wondering 
all of the RISAs, this, this particular law of the Mississippi Code is what establishes the RISAs if you ever want to go and read that. They are able to act on your behalf for all kinds of purchasing and everything, to come into your school district and work on your behalf, doing any number of things. And this is the actual Mississippi law, the, the code that sets them up as being able to do this. Uh, this is a listing of, of the RISAs that have all signed on. Like I said, other than you know just a few school districts, this covers everybody. Y'all are members of one of these. You know, you may, if you, you all aren't that involved in your RISAs, you may want to go back and check and see which one you are actually a member of, but you're a member of all of them. All of the directors have, have signed on to, to participate in this and your superintendents at their different meetings and everything will be getting LOAs as well. Um, just trying to get as many of those signed as we can. If you are able to sign an LOA, Marvin's got copies of them uh, that we brought with us here just so that we can get those um, you know, all in and, and, and ready so that we can do the 470 process as quickly as possible. But we are trying to wait on everybody that might want to use it and make sure that we get the word out so that we're not leaving anybody off. <coughs> there again, this is from straight from the USAC website. Uh, consortium members are eligible entities, schools or libraries. Uh, member participation in a lot of states is mandatory. They actually have to go in with a consortium as part of their state law or whatever you have to purchase through this consortium. In Mississippi, it's not, it's voluntary. So that's why one of the reasons that we are needing to get those LOAs from you before we go out and file this Form 470, and, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second. So the LOA authorizes us, that, or s says the consortium leader, to be able to seek out E-rate discounts or bids, in this case, on behalf of the eligible consortium members. Um, you have to complete an LOA unless the consortium participates in, like I was saying, in your state is mandatory. Some states it is, and Mississippi it is not. And this is the reason why. I had a long discussion about it uh, with Leslie Freelow, one of the ladies from, from USAC at the, at the E-Rate training in New Orleans. And uh, I can understand where they're coming from and why we need to do this. Um, the LOA sets up knowingness. They don't want us they don't want us going out and acting on behalf of any schools to you know, get receive bids or anything like that without y'all knowing that we are. That's the whole purpose of the LOA. That's the only thing it does is it says, okay, I know that Tim and Marvin are going to go out and get prices for me, and I'm good with that. So that, that's all we're doing with the LOA. It binds you to nothing. It, it costs nothing to use. All it is is, is uh, a, a tool to let you said no that y'all knew that we went out and got tried to collect pricing for you. Um, tell, this tell, tell them the history <laughs> of the FCC ruling requiring that. Well, at one point, um, at one point with S. Risa, we were um, we had sought guidance, and actually, I still have the original email from Leslie Freelo explaining. You know how to go about this with a consortium and, and we were allowed to add people onto that contract at any time they just needed to sign an LOA before they went and filed their form 471 and they became a member of the consortium or whatever if they were not a member at that time um, for some reason the FCC decided that and went over USAC's head and said no if you're not on that original 470 if you did not have an LOA before that 470 was filed you can't use that contract. So we had to, you know, midstream reverse engines and, and, and change everything up. So that's one of the reasons, again, we're preaching, you know, we, we want to get that hell away from you because you may want to, it's gonna be a five-year contract, you may want to, in a couple of years, use this. You don't know what it is gonna be coming down your road. You don't know what fiber is gonna be buried right out in front of your school. And if you only had, you know, signed that 470, and I, we get a lot of school districts LOA. that that's, I mean, LOA. Mm -hmm. uh, we get a lot of school districts that, that come back and, man, I wish I could have used it because, you know, Telepac just put fiber, you know, right in front of my school, or Inline just ran all this fiber right down the road, you know. And if I would have only known, I could have jumped off and used that and, and gotten some fantastic pricing. I, I know Marvin, I'm, I'm still 
upset about how cheap he's getting the internet over there. <laughs> um, I, want, I want internet that cheap. So this is our ticket to the timeline right now. Like, like we said, we are trying to go out and collect the LOAs from, from y'all um, and get as many as we possibly can before we go out and do that for 470. Um, if any of y'all want to participate in this and help me and Marvin out, we will not turn it up away at all from you know, uh, uh, writing the, the RFP that we'll be using, um, designing the rubric, feedback, going out and talking to you know, talking to those those companies in your area that provide internet, and provide fiber, and all those kind of services, and getting them, you know, let them know about it. They may not know that, that this is going to be out there, and uh, you know, you may need to go and tell them, please go bid on this. You don't have to bid on the whole state of Mississippi. You can bid for an area. You can say, you know, that vendor can come back to us and say, I can cover North Mississippi. I can cover West Mississippi. Here will be my prices for my customers, and it's a not to exceed price. Then these other companies will come in and bid against them, and you can take the lowest and best price off of a rubric that we're also going to try to design and hand to you. And to make the process just as quick as possible, as easy as possible, you you know, you go and get approved by your, you know, you go out and get your, your quotes, you get approved by your board, you, you turn around and file your form 471. But if y'all want to, we've got uh, I've got a Skype meeting set up that I know me and Marvin will be sitting in on, and anybody else that wants to contact me and we'll 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 let you know where we're going to do it at um, with Mel Blackwell and his staff so that we can get some of our questions answered and so we can make sure that we're doing everything right according to, to what the rules are right now. We're also trying to get Jim Young involved in it. We've had several conversations with him just to kind of have the legal expertise behind us and, and you know, for them to, to, you know, be able to kind of let us know anything that may trip us up. We're going to try to involve him in that process as well. Um, like I said, as soon as we get all the, you know, get as many LOAs in, we're going to be going out and doing newspaper advertisements. I don't know, Dr. Calvin, the director of Esresa, I don't know how in detail he's going to get with it this time around, but let's see here. I believe it was our last contract. It was in, the, the bid advertisement was in every little podunk paper on the face of the earth. I mean, every little paper in, you know, if you had, you know, our little apprentice headlight and all these papers, it was in every single one in, in the state of Mississippi. They went to that <laughs> to that degree. Um, we will be having, uh, going through all the same steps that you would in your school district, having a mandatory bidders conference where we will have, have those, those vendors come in and uh, explain to them what we expect out of them and how we will be trying to step up if they don't do right by these school districts, same thing that ITS would do. Um, Hopefully, and these are tentative timelines, like I said, because, you know, Marvin's already fussed at me. You're rushing it. You're rushing it. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I want to get it done so it's out there for y'all to use, but we will pr proceed slowly. Um, December, we'll get, you know, we'll try to get that approved by a board that's made up of, of your different RESA directors and everything, and then finally approved by the S-RESA board since they are the lead consortium member, uh, you know, hopefully sometime in January, so that the, at that point, now it's ready for us to hand off to you. We hand you that 470 number. We hand you, you know, the, and, and Marvin's even talking about, you know, making up a form where online where you would go in and enter your information and everything and click submit. It would send an email to all of those vendors to the email address that they, that they have put on that, that contract to let them know I'm seeking, you know, I'm seeking these many bids now. It give you a little confirmation sheet to print out so that you have that documentation that yes, you went out and let everybody know that you were bidden and, and you know, you're ready to go. So your next step at this point, and even if you don't want to use it, signing that LOA it is, it, it doesn't matter. It binds you to nothing like I've been saying. Um, we would love for you to go ahead and sign it so that, you know, you don't know what you're going to be moving to another position or whatever the next person coming in may, you know, that may be a benefit to them to be able to use that. Um, like I said, contacting vendors and encouraging them to bid. Um, you know, your local telephone company, you know, your local ISP or whatever. Uh, encourage them to, you know, let them know that we're doing this. We want the best prices, you know, possible for the whole state of Mississippi. We want to get as much fiber in the ground as we can. So that Mississippi is not always dead last and everything. You know, we would, you know, it's something like this with that much E-rate money coming to Mississippi. It just makes me so angry that 
you know, why do we not have the best internet on the face of the earth in Mississippi? We have all of these 90% schools. We have all this E-rate money coming in. Why are there still people living, you know, 100 yards outside of town and they can't get DSL out of their area? It's a detriment to everybody when you don't have, you know, when you're being held back instead of being able to progress forward, but I'll, I'll quit preaching. Um, and, and like we are saying, participate in the selection process. Come in and, and, and talk to us. Uh, um, when we schedule these meetings, we'll let y'all know through the TC list or whatever. You know, take an active role in this and let, this is yours. You know, this isn't just me and Mark and, and, and S. Risa. This is, this is all the races in the state of Mississippi. Take ownership of it and give us your feedback and tell us what y'all need out of it. Because it's one of those, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I was going to have to go out for bid for my own stuff anyway. It's coming up this year. You know, Marvin's going to have to go out for, for bid for his own stuff as well. But we're using this opportunity to try to create something for you that hopefully that you can use. And, and like I said, we can push Mississippi forward and we can get more money for our buck, more, more, more internet for our kids, and, and more bandwidth for our areas. You know, more businesses coming in because we have all this fiber in the ground. They're not coming there now. You know, they're not coming into your area now. And, you know, at least this would be something that might draw them in if they know you've got, you know, you've got all this fiber running right down through there that they can tap into. So, you know, I mean, I'm saying the status quo obviously hasn't worked for Mississippi. Let's let's do something different. All right, when everything is done. You will contact the approved vendors. They will all submit their little bids. Uh, like I said, we're going to try to draft up a little, a, another little RFP for you to use, uh, a template that you can, you know, anything that you want to add on if you want them to make sure that they bury all your fiber or they run the fiber a certain way or, or whatever kind of specs you want to put into it. We're going to hand you a template that you can type that stuff in and add that into it so that it's exactly as customized to what you want in your area. You'll get your, your bids back from, from, from all the vendors, uh, get your board's approval, and file your form 471. And it's something that you that you do anyway. You know, we've just taken the old bid process out of it, the 470 out of it, and you're gonna do just as the, your normal 471 after you've collected those those bids. It's like using the old EPL. Yeah. And I was gonna say, if someone am I hearing you create that we won't have to put a bid in. They have to put another bid in us. Like if I have a job to start with to do, they'll come and give me quotes on it or bids on my particular job and I don't have to go out and do another bid or something? Right. You you you, you will take the RFP template that we're gonna that we're gonna put together for you. You're gonna put any extra stuff in. This is an EPL kind of contract, not to exceed pricing. So you're going to contact all those all those bidders and, and tell them you got X number of days to get back with me on this. Here's my RFP and everything, and then they're going to come in and give you many bids on on the work that you need done. <coughs> and then you're going to use your rubric or whatever to evaluate those bids. Okay, I'll give, you know I'm going to give, of course, 20%. You know the biggest amount to you know the lowest price because you've got to. And then below that it's going to be you know I'm going to give. 10 or 15 points to a company I've worked with before, or this company because they're going to do you know they're going to do it this way or whatever. You evaluate them on that rubric, and, and that's one of the things that schools and libraries is always asking for whenever I've you know been audited in the past and everything. They want that rubric, you know, why did you decide on this company? Something you're supposed to be doing anyway. Uh, you go before your board, make sure that they you know understand that you don't you know you're buying off of this S Risa this Risa contract. Get their approval on it. Turn around and file your form 471. So it, it's just we're cutting out that, the front end of that work, but you're not locked into one vendor. There's, there's, you know, will hopefully be multiple vendors on there. Um, you know, that, that's the step, last step right there. Is, is you know, filing, filing that form 471. Just fill in our 470 number, and you're done. And this is the support I was talking about. Some of the things that we're that we're going to. Marvin and I are going to try to do and, and make it. You've seen, y'all have seen how Marvin does. That's one of the reasons that I, I kept on bugging him about it until I finally drafted him into helping me with it. Y'all have seen how detailed he is on anything that he gives to y'all. You know what I'm saying? He's taken out a lot of the, the, 
you know, a lot of the work and everything made it easy for you. That's what we're going to try to do with this. We're going to hand you off an RFP template that's that's built for you just to be able to fill in, you know, whatever whatever you want and send it off to them. We're going to send you a, a rubric that you can customize, you know, to, to cover any other things that you want to do as far as the rating of these vendors. We're going to, we, we've got, we've already, you know, spoken with Mel Blackwell. We've, we've got the lines of communication open. We're going to go back and answer, you know, those, those PIA questions to the best of our ability with them um, and keep all that documentation at the SRESA office in Hattiesburg so that, you know, well, most of them have already got scanned online anyway. But, uh, but keep up with all that information so that if, if there is a PIA review question. And the other thing is, honestly, compared to going out and bidding for yourself, they are planning on fast-tracking these consortium applications. So hopefully, you know, by the time they've gone through mine, because I've been following mine under the same exact thing, you know, this year, by the time they've gone through mine, all the questions have been answered. And that's another benefit of it. The next 20 of y'all to go through, well, that's the same, this is the same contract that Jeff Davis County has already used. Yeah, we, we've got the, the questions answered. Consortium, you know, the consortium review will not, they, they won't be coming to ask me more questions because all the questions have been answered. And that is all I've got, so I'll, I'll go ahead and take questions at this point. If anybody has any questions about the what we're doing or... <laughs> Who all has used your previous contracts? Gosh. Hattiesburg, Lamar, me. Um, let's see, who else in the room has used this here? Columbus. Columbus. Marshall County. Marshall County. Yeah, yeah that was surprising to me how many folks up in North Mississippi jumped in and decided to use it. Didn't they? Smith County. County. George, I, I think George got some pricing off of it. I know he's okay. on telepack with his internet, but I think he may have gone out for his own. Oh. I was signed up the first time that Esresa, and we signed the uh, LOA for mm -hmm. them, but it didn't work out. We're, the, we're probably the most rural county in the state. We don't even have a traffic signal of any sort in the whole county. Well, I, like it, I like it. I like it. it. We, we, have, we have a four-way stop, but we don't have a traffic light. Uh, and I like it like that, so don't nobody mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's where all my family is from, right. Smith County. It's a little gym now. But we signed, we signed the LOA with, with uh, Jack McAlpin and them, the S-Rays, uh, three or four years ago, the first time he did. And uh, we, did, we did not have any kind of fiber you know, available over there, so we couldn't use it at the time. We, could, we did our own bids, and, but, but using the guidelines that y'all did mm -hmm. put out our RFPs and all that good stuff. Yeah. So, so and there will be some areas where the company's probably won't, money. yeah, there will be some areas where the company's probably won't bid fiber. We hope they will bid fiber anywhere, but there may be some spots where there's, there's they have to build right bid wireless to get out. There's some lights over in our area, but now we're getting fiber, so, you know, it's, it's, it's beginning to get where we could. And, and y'all don't think the wireless is a, is a bad thing. I, I Before fiber started coming down in price, I did wireless for years in, in Jeff Davis County. It worked out wonderfully. The only thing that I, the, the only problem we ever had was there were a few mornings where it was like way below freezing and you had to wait for the sun to come out and warm that, uh, warm that bridge sitting up there on top of that tower. It had to warm up a little bit when it would really start clicking. There was on a microwave, really? Yep, it did. I swear. Wow. The, you could tell that the, that the speeds were down first thing in the morning until that sun came up and started warming up that Cisco 1400 bridge that was sitting up there on top. And all of a sudden, it just didn't think start clicking along. It was, it was strange. Any other questions? So I have a question. Um, you're talking about when you advertise those papers. Does the consortium have some kind of budget to pay for all those bids and papers and stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. They do. Um, that's usually that's something that we would be doing for our members anyway. And so, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, it's not going to affect anything going out and doing it statewide or doing it, you know, they still end up going out. And because we've got, ESRESA has members all over the state. So it's something that we, you know, in the past they've had to do anyway. But uh, um, I would assume Dr. McAlpin's probably going to, you know, that's his decision. That's not mine, of course. But you know, we're we're definitely going to hit all the big newspapers in the state. 
with that, you know, with that advertisement, as well as put it on the Esteresa's website and all of the other Reese's <coughs> websites, you know, just to make sure that we get the word out there. Because like I said, we want as many folks as we possibly can uh, get bidding on it. You know, we, we want that competition. We want, you know, whenever I, I went out for bid, I was begging Millie to come down there and, and you know, make sure that she, she stuck her bid in there too so that everybody sharpened up their pencils. Any other questions? Okay, so let me make sure this is right. If I don't sign this LOA, the second you submit that 470, I'm ineligible for it for the entire term. Unfortunately, because schools and libraries wants that knowingness, that knowingness that, that we went out on your behalf and sought out bids. If, if, if we don't have the LOA before we file our, our form 470, which we will have to list on that form 470, Every school district that signed an LOA with us will have to be listed on that form 470, and that's the first thing they're going to check when they when they go to see, you know, are you going to, you know, are, you're you're using this form 470? They're going to make sure you're on it. Then the next thing they're going to do is they're going to call up Dr. McAlpin and they're going to ask for copies of all the LOAs from all the schools, and he's got to send them to them. And that, that's just, I mean, that's every time we've done it, and this will be our fourth time. You know, every time we've done it, they've done that. They want, they want all the LOAs and everything. We have to package them up and send them to them. Hey, yeah. An LOA does not cost you anything except a little time and maybe a postage stamp. It does not commit you to anything. Right. You know, you're not there's, really, there's really no reason not to. <clears throat> that, I mean, you know, and even, you know, but at and back there, they, when we've opened up our bids and everything, they come and bring a letter right. saying, you know, here is, is our response to it as well, the at t response to it. And it's usually referencing back to RFP 4000. You know, they're not actually on our on our contract, but they, they come as well, so. It is how What's the address that you mailed it? It's, it's, I, I, I should have put that in the slide. That would have been smart. I have some oh. here if you want to sign them. Yeah. <laughs> Marvin's got a whole bunch of them. You can scan them and send them to, to me or Marvin. And uh, uh, so you know, scan it we'll take the original back to SRESA or it's s-resa.org and their PO box is right there on it. And I'll post it to the TC listserv at the end and everything as well. And we'll make sure, you know, I'll, I'll work with Marvin as far as getting together. We've already got a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a Google website set up where we're trying to put all of this information so y'all have one place to go to and click on to get all your forms and all that kind of stuff get all the information know where to where to mail off the uh, um, the 472 uh, but like I said you know a lot of y'all superintendents I know I can't remember if it was S. Risa was meeting anybody know if S. Risa was meeting with superintendents yesterday or today yesterday, yesterday? So some of your superintendents, if y'all are in SRESA, some of your superintendents may have already signed it and turned it into Dr. McAlpin. I've got to swing through Hattiesburg at some point. Yes, ma'am. The, the time frame that you're talking about, you know, for the uh, for the LOA, that's the first thing that you need to sign. Is that like a, is that like a year or is that like a... a like about two weeks. Yeah, no, no, no. What's, how long is the contract? That's my question. Oh, the, the, the contract, we decided to, we're trying to keep the contract short. The contract is going to be for five years. Okay. Okay, it's going to be for five years. And we won't be doing another one every year, I don't think. I mean, I guess we could if we got enough people that needed it. Because, like I said, it's all about y'all. If all of a sudden we had 20 school districts show up and say, hold on, you know, we all please go out and bid again so that we can jump on. I think both me and Martin would be happy to do that. But right now, what we're trying to do is get Everybody that is that's even thinking about it, go ahead and sign an LOA with us so that we can go ahead and have y'all on that Form 470. We're trying to get to the point where we do that Form 470 as quickly as possible so we can turn around and get all this stuff back to y'all. But like I said, you know, Marvin keeps on telling me, hold up, hold up, hold up, because, you know, we're trying to get as many LOAs as we can. We're, we don't want to rush it. But we'll let y'all know, you know, when we get down to the point that, you know, we've got to do the Form 470 now. We'll let y'all know if we don't have it, you know, that, that day before we sit down to file it, that'll be it on this contract. 
And your, the plan is five-year contracts. The plan is five-year contracts because that you know most everybody is. If you're smart about it, you know most everybody's going to go out for a three-year contract unless you get some kind of crazy great pricing. But you can go out for five years if you're on the front end of it, mm -hmm. or if you're like if you're like Marvin who has another. Mm -hmm. I've got year. two years on my. He's got two years. I got, on his a, year, I got a year on the win, two years on the. But in, in two years, he'll be able to flip around and do a three-year contract. With this one. With this one. Yeah, I'm in this And then we'll, we'll, you know, if we get enough school districts that need it, we'll do it again next year if we got to. But uh, if, if we, you know, if, if we get everybody in that needs it and everything, we'll do it, you know, this time. And then five years from now, we'll come back and we'll do it again and, and you know, start all over again. So I guess my, my question really is, if the position I'm in right now, no, I'm not ready to do anything, but I don't know what I don't know what next year is going to hold, and I don't want to limit myself. I may have to do something next year. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, then I, then I, just I would say, I, sign, I mean, I'm already on a. I mean, I can use the, the the sign. The LOA doesn't commit you to anything. Just sign it. It just protects you for later, but it doesn't. Yeah, it, it gives you the ability to use it if you decide to. Pricing. Am I correct? If, right. Yeah, if, if you have to do something next year. It enables me to take part in it, and then it helps drive the price. But you don't have to. For those of you doing it now, right? You can do like I did. I signed that LOA. But I did not use their LOA. I went out and got my own bills. Mm -hmm. And that's fine as well. I didn't see I, so I, but, but their there's, LOA meant absolutely nothing other than I put my and, entry on. And it's a safety net as well. If you want to go out on your own, that's great. We would encourage everybody to go out on their own. Um, you know, some people don't have the time, don't have, you know, the, the personnel and everything to go out on their own. Um, but also, if you do go out on your own and make a mistake, that has happened. Oh, crap. I did this in front of my board at the time or whatever. You got a safety net. Yeah. No, forget it. You know, let me just scrap this where I went out on my own and let me jump over here and get some mini bids and, and keep on moving because I need to get this fiber or I need to upgrade my circuit or, or whatever the case may be. It's a safety net. You don't have to use this contract at all. We're encouraging everybody to you know, give us an LOA so that y'all, you know, you, you also help out the other folks that are that are that are doing it, you know, help us drive those prices down. Any other questions? <clears throat> Billy? Tim, I have a question and a comment, and I apologize, I was completely in here, so I hope you can go over this before I got in here. This is only for circuits and internet, is that correct? Well, and basic maintenance. Okay. We, we, basic maintenance will be in there as well, just because there's times that you may need it. No talk or consideration of trying to do anything for category two. That would be so Man, good. Yeah, to no so be <laughs> yes, me and me and Marvin discussed it, and we did whenever we were sending out emails and everything. Uh, we did have several technology coordinators come back and say, hey, man, are you know, going to do it for wireless? Are you going to do it for Category 2 and everything? Because all that's coming up. Um, I think me and Marvin were both like, you know, you know, if we had that guy that was up here earlier on on our team, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I, I mean, I think me and Marvin are both knowledgeable and everything, but I would, you know, I, I would be scared of going out and, and doing that. But, it, I mean, if, if enough folks want it, yeah, I don't, I don't mind staying so up a little bit late and trying to get some stuff done. You know, there's so much change to the rules and regs, and, and Gary and Lee are doing a great job so far with the road shows, mm -hmm. but still, it's so much to grasp, and, and any help, y'all can give them. I just think it would be very thorough. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to complete myself too thorough. <laughs> But it, it, I mean, it's something like I said. It's something that we have discussed, that, you know. And I mean, I guess we do have enough time if we can knock this out and get it out of the way. We might go back and look at something else like that, as far as you know, the category of multi vendor category two. Wasn't ITS going to do something like that? They talked about it, but the last time I was curious, they just didn't have time, or they felt like the time constraints and everything. <laughs> and we do. That was discussion. Well, there again, if we got, hey, the other thing is we got some volunteers that wanted to jump in, especially some you know, guys that are really good with wireless or whatever to help us, you know, draft up an RFP and get all that work done. Yeah, we, we 
Lee, if you were sitting in these chairs right now, would you hesitate to sign on that LOA? Hesitate the LOA? No, because that just gives you an option out there. It means absolutely nothing right. other than the SEC makes us do it. Right, yeah, it's, it's an FCC rule. Like I said, you go to the contract, whatever, consortium, you have to be part of that consortium um, to do that piece of it. And you have to be part of it stated explicitly on the 47. That's the issue. Mm -hmm. That's the change that they made right. that messed people up. Right. But, you know, originally, a lot of people still worry about the LOA because remember when we originally had to do because of the equipment and stuff was on there, and MDD was buying equipment for you, uh -huh. and it was causing problems. If you signed the LOA with somebody else, and you know, they, especially when the two five rule came in, that's when everybody got so scared about signing the LOA. And that's the reason it does not file a form four seventy one. Right, uh, and you know, after the department we do quit buying for you, that's why we stopped buying it because it was interfering with the school being able to buy the two five. So, besides from the fact that you have a dog in this hunt, uh, <laughs> would you sign? Would you have any trouble signing if you were in our position? Yeah. Lee said no. Not since the rules. Lee said it's okay. Yeah. Okay, Lee said it's okay. Yeah. Because I know we signed with the state and we were doing so. He's saying it's okay. I can drag Ken Thompson back out to everybody. He was one of the ones that talked me into it in the beginning. I needed to, I was I'm in a windstream area. So I don't even have at and they're not an option. And uh, you know, I was like, you know, I'm gonna I'm just gonna go off and jump off over here and do this. And Ken Thompson was like, go for it, too. Do it. And I I don't regret it for a minute. So when do you need this back? Just as quick as you can get it to us. We we want to what's that address? They're not in danger. Well what what are we are we gonna set a deadline, Marvin? I want you to fuss at me about timelines. You said it. <laughs> I mean, the deadline is the day we submit the 470. It's that simple. I mean, what? what day Cause once it's done, it's done. The way what day are you going to submit it? What's the date? I know the original one we had talked about it. When Lee, when's the 470? We're going to push that one back so we can get more LOAs. We have the 470 the RPM for Days, out days. We basically could start on the open date and backtrack. Right. Yeah. If we're going to open and get get cleared in early January, we've got maybe two weeks. Yeah. Because we've also I mean, got you, you got to follow the state. Yeah, our board is going to work around whatever timeline we come up with. They're going to come together and meet. So that's that's not that big of an issue. Um, I have just the need to more than just. A couple of weeks to right. get out their stuff because it's gonna, their application is going to be harder to file this year. And they need, you know, they need more time to be able to. And, and that's why we had set the date for November 18th originally, is that we were going to try to get everything in by November 18th. November 18th, you know, have the four seventy and all the <coughs> newspaper ads running at that point. But I mean, we, you know, if we've got folks that, you know, are their superintendents on vacation or whatever else, I, I don't have a problem pushing back some more. But if we could have them, if we could have them by November 18th, that would be a wonderful thing. Mike, the deadline is November 18th. Okay. So there's no adverse uh, effects as far as the, the number of LOAs that we can sign, then, correct? No, you can sign LOA with everybody under the. You know, you can go sign the LOA with Alabama's consortium if you want to. Right. Is that right, Lee? It doesn't matter. That's not really go sign the LOA with what is it up in Minnesota or whatever? They've got <laughs> one that's starting to get used in a bunch of different states, and you go sign the LOA with Minnesota. You know, you know, it doesn't matter. Any other questions? Comments? Ready to go on? You can email us. I'm going to email you. I'll email you. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep on. As long as nobody minds getting spammed, that's the only thing I worry about sometimes. Somebody fussing me about throwing something on the TC list and nobody wants to read. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll post that information you know, up on the TC list so that everybody kind of has it. And, and on that Google, are we ready to publish that Google slide or do we want to do some more work on it? 
it's already published. Well, you you know what I mean. Send it out to everybody. Oh, yeah. Send well, the link out. <laughs> I thought it was. I thought we were mirroring it on the RISA sites. You know what we're doing? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. I forgot about that. Therefore, it's already out there. Yeah. My apologies. Okay. Yeah. There's already the link. The the, the link that I'm talking about. That's right. Never mind. We, we already set it up as an iframe on the on the SRISA website and everything. Uh, and that's where we're going to be dumping all of those all, all those documents and everything, any, any, any other stuff like that. But we'll send it out to the TC list too, because um, I know if, if y'all are like me, I, I read it religiously, but I may not be going out and visiting the websites that much. Anything else? One more comment. Okay. Um, so, because we ran into this before, when, when we had SRIS before, um, when you do your mini bid, it doesn't have to be out there 28 days, like the 470. Right. Uh, but please, please, on behalf of all vendors, don't send us something to build five of your schools and say, I need it back tomorrow. You're not going to get a good response from us. Fiber, it is construction. There's permitting, there's engineering, there's franchise costs. It would be like trying to walk into Lowe's and determine what it's going to cost you to build an entire house in a day or two. Please give us sufficient time you know, because you're not going to get my best answer, or Trisha's, or AT&T's, or anyone else, if you send it out there, you know, mm -hmm. a week before the window closes, and you want and you want pricing, I, I just, you know, we're going to have. We enjoy making y'all suffer. Right? <laughs> That's the well, only thing. I enjoy mean, I that we get out of our job is. is watching vendors squirm. <laughs> There's, there's nothing else. All day long we deal with teachers. Like but to see somebody else suffer as bad as we do. <laughs> but I can't give you my best price. I'm going to make you a lot of guesses. And, and, and so your price we, is going to be higher if you don't give us time to, to really dig in and, and get you, you know. And I think everybody here wants right. to give y'all plenty of time to make sure that y'all yes. sharpen that pencil. The, the template will we really did have people, I mean, a couple of years ago, yeah. like the day before the window closes, send us, you know, oh, I want an S race photo building to 16 different schools, and you're like, oh, it's something. <laughs> I, I can't. Did you do it? Of course you did. I had more price, but it was, it was hot. I mean, okay. I, it's just, I'm like, you don't want to do this because I'm having to guess too much. Yeah. And, and I'm sure we'll, we'll put some of that kind of stuff in our little. In our, <laughs> Part of being on the website and things some guidance for the school districts as far as give you all 30 days or you know, as much notice as possible to, to get the prices for them. Usually, you know, usually three weeks is good, two weeks we can probably get you something <coughs> pretty decent, but no less than two weeks, y'all. Two weeks, okay. You really need to walk through. Yeah. I mean, vendors need to walk through for a bill like that. Google Earth, y'all got to walk through. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see where I'm parked in my driveway. <laughs> well, it's part of they decided to drive down your driveway the last time they come through. True, true, true. <laughs> I'm on there a couple of times. I've been behind the Google car well, twice I, now. They so I'm thinking I've got my house is somewhere else. My house is not even where you show them, so, you know. I've been stuck you. behind the Google car twice, but I can't find myself. <laughs> so. All right, anything else? All right, Pam, you got anything? I'll let you take it back over. I don't think so.